Good morning. Morning. Pat is okay. there. Okay. And Elise is morning. there. I'm yeah. going to I have to leave at noon. I have another meeting to get to and, and then a medical appointment. So. Okay. Um, I have know? to leave at one. Well, the one it's over. Do you, um, <laughs> Pat, do you know anything about this thing with the TSO and Andy? Um, wanting us to meet about, uh, wanting us to discuss Southeast Street access to the new school? Uh, all he, no, but that's a really good idea to do. Uh, he mentioned it in his TSO report. So contacting him, I can contact him. And Well, no, him. he contacted me on Saturday. He asked yeah. me to put it on our agenda. Good. I said it was too late. He said it could be within 48 hours. He sent me access to whatever documents it is. I can't find most of them. Um, and I, I mean, he wants, I think a joint meeting with him, his, with the TSO and the transportation committee and us is a good idea, but if we can't, I mean, I'll bring it up today. I want people to start to think about it, Okay. but I don't see how we can come up with anything. I mean, we don't even know what the plan is that they are considering. I don't know. Myra, yeah. if you can forward me his email to you with the material. I did. Oh, you did? You, you did? It. Yeah. Oh, okay. I haven't been in my town account. I, <clears> I forwarded it account. last night. I sent it to Pamela and you and our committee, most of yes. whom I think probably haven't had time to look at it. Um, nope. But okay, anyway... I, I don't want them to make any huh. decisions without us, but I don't think three days notice is a reasonable. Oh. Yeah. Emerson. No, that's different. You yeah, sent it. Oh, here here it is. Southeast Street. Yeah. It came in last night while I was at. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I didn't see it at all. Yeah. No, I'm sure you didn't. As I'm saying, there's. The notice was um, difficult. And when you start to think about that intersection with all of the students being dropped off by buses, by parents, and all the cars that are trying to get to UMass, it's going yeah. to be a nightmare. The I believe that they are proposing roundabouts. Oh no! But where are they? Yeah. Uh -uh. Um, where are they proposing that at the corner of Southeast uh, Street? Uh, I thought there were a couple of them. I would have to, and maybe I should do that now. I'll go into a meeting or two ago and see if I can. I don't know if it was a TSO meeting, but I can try to find the materials. Um, Okay, so here's the problem. There are kids who are going to walk there on Main Street from the east and the west Yeah, who are going to be walkers. Yep. There are kids who are going to walk there on College Street primarily from the east, not from right. the west. Right. Um, but there are kids that are going to walk. And if you're going to ask them to cross roundabouts, oh, my God. <laughs> What Why I'm didn't they do... think about this? That's not okay. safe. What I'm going to do is drop out of the meeting temporarily. Okay. So that I can try to find the material. And if you can, if can I can, I'll send, send it, it to right all of away. us as attachments. Yeah, not just as a link to the document center, which I find very difficult to use. Oh, let me see. Oh, well, let me can see. I let me I'm going in that link right now. Maybe I don't have to leave. Good morning, Pamela. <laughs> Good morning. Can you all hear me? We yeah. can. Okay. I've been having trouble with my Zoom, uh, um, so hopefully it will uh, it will last for the entirety of the meeting. In, that would be good. <laughs> I know. Yeah. In the materials that um, that Andy sent, there is a memo dated August thirtieth from um, Paul and Guilford to town council, which is probably 
um, it, it, well, easier to navigate than the other documents, but I haven't reviewed it um, closely enough. Okay, it okay. Like Memo that... to town council. Hang on. Oh, cool. Okay, so if you can send that just as a regular attachment, mm -hmm. I expect at least yeah, and I will have a lot easier it. time finding it. The document center is not easy to use. Right. Yeah, I agree. I think yeah, it's I technically agree. accessible, but it's not, it, it's very, very complicated. Okay. So would, um, so you do, you have uh, Olivian and Saren, so you have a quorum. We have Saren? Okay. Yes. Um, yeah. And I'm going to, yes, I'm here. I'm going to ignore you all, but I, I'm okay. listening. I've got to okay. try to get this. So I'm going to um, read the intro and okay. get you started. Fabulous. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting of the Disability Access Advisory Committee will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. And the time is 11.34. Perfect, okay. So um, we need a roll call. Um, let's see, it, I don't even know who's here. Cody, are you here? Uh, Cody is n is not here. You okay. have uh, Ian. Is Ian here? Yes, Ian. Okay, I'm here. Ian's here. Sarah here. Elise here. Jim. No, Jim. Yes, Jim. No, Jim. No, Jim. And Myra. So we have four out of six, and I have not heard from Jim or Cody. So they'll hopefully be late and not missing. Um, so we have some, uh, does anyone have any announcements? Nobody has any announcements. Okay. Um, actually, I thought of one, Pamela, you have that meeting on the 18th. Do you have any people who are, who have let you know that they're planning to attend? Uh, I do not. Um, however, I think uh, Kat Newman, who's an, a staff member in the Crest Department and who uses uh, a service dog, will be attending. So, uh, so I'll have someone there, but no. Okay. No I think it would be, I cannot. I'm having surgery on the 17th. I don't even know if I'll be in the hospital or home, but I cannot attend a meeting on the 18th. And I think it's really important for someone from this committee to try to be there um, because, I mean, you know, it's, I think the topic is important for us. It's sort Sorry, of Myra, uh, this is Ian. Which, which meeting is that again? Can you describe Pam, Pamela, sure. please? So the, um, the DEI department hosts a monthly staff meeting um, and the topic for the 18th is on the ADA and um, accessibility. Um, so I opened an invitation if there was a member of the committee who'd like to attend, um, you know, I would welcome you. The, the meeting starts, or the workshop starts at 8.30 and runs from 8.30 until 10.30. You would, uh, if you're able to attend, you wouldn't have to be there for the entire two hour block. I can arrange things around um, so that if someone wanted to come later in the morning, they would be able to do so. So you're just going to give a broad overview, essentially, that what the ADA covers and yeah. and and things like that? Yeah, so, the, so I've been working on the uh, workshop presentation, so it will review ADA, it will, um, and all five titles under the ADA and the amendment. It will also talk a little bit about um, the work of this committee. Um, um, it, will, it will talk specifically about how the ADA applies to city governments. Um, and we'll mention um, briefly the uh, MAAB, the Massachusetts um, Architectural Assets Board. 
It would be good if you could also talk about the website accessibility rules that were promulgated in April that, oh my God, I can't remember his name, Mr. The gentleman yes. from Belchertown who comes yeah. sometimes, and we really need to have him as a witness, you know, an expert at some of our meetings if we're going to talk websites because he knows a lot about them. But but there Cody there really are good. rules. Here's Cody. Hi, Cody. There are rules about new rules about what town websites have to do, um, and how they have to be written, and ours is minimally acceptable, um, right. from what I can tell. Minimal. So that is uh, 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 Rob Evely, and he is actually here and oh, has fabulous. Henry. Well, somebody has. Okay. Oh, well, I'm glad you're here, Rob. We're not up to that item yet, but um, I'm glad you're here. Okay. Um, so if anybody can go to her meeting and just represent us, that would be great. It won't be official or anything. I just can't do it. Um, all right. And Pat has her hand up. Pat. Yes. Yeah, not for that. Okay. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to tell you that I've sent you and Pamela a copy of the TSO report, and it has pictures, et cetera, of the roundabout, which won't be as helpful to you, Myra. Did you send it to everyone? No, um, I can could do you? that now. I'll forward yeah. it to everyone else. That would be great if you yeah. could send it to everyone, because maybe even when we get to that topic at uh, 1240, if we get there, um okay. people can look at the picture i don't uh, i'll try but i i think um yeah i know this is really bad notice i don't i don't like it i don't approve of how we were asked to do this but um okay roundabout is a dirty word for some of us yep <laughs> <laughs> i okay. uh, i have a question what is tos uh this report is are you talking about wait i'm sorry I, can't hear you. I think i missed the part when you were discussing that um where exactly is i mean we'll get there but i guess what this is about is the intersection of southeast street and main street and actually oh, Burton, oh, there's okay. three roads okay. and okay. They are I putting see. a new school there, which is going oh, to yeah, have yeah, yeah. a okay. ridiculous amount of traffic. Um, yeah. And they have to figure out what to do about it since they put the school there before they right. thought about that. Yeah. Apparently. I looked through, I tried to understand from the documents and they said it is under 8D or something like that. And I couldn't, it was just pages and pages and pages long. And okay. I couldn't it's even terrible. know what I was looking at. So, All right, no. well, we'll get there, and hopefully Andy will come, and if he doesn't, we'll know what we need to ask him. Okay, who just came in? Jim. Oh, Jim, yay. Hello. Okay, so we have everybody now. All right. Um, all right, the next topic might have to do with our uh, letter to um, the town about, uh, about our walkthrough that we had on September 4th. Um, we sent a letter in September to the town um, manager and no, actually to the council CC to the manager. And I got a response and Pamela got a response from Lynn pretty much that they don't have anything to report to us about progress, but she apologized for that and they're going to work on it this week and they should have something back to us about that. And I wrote back to Lynn and I told her that if they do nothing else, they need to fix that patch of sidewalk on Triangle Street on the south side be, uh, east of the roundabout that is completely missing because there's no way anyone in a wheelchair could go over that piece of ground. Um, uh, you know, without going into the street, which is a busy street, and it's pretty outrageous that it's been that way so long. But if they do nothing else, they need to they need to fix that sidewalk. And I hope that speaks for the committee. But that seems to me to be an emergency. So we'll wait to hear from Lynn. Um, Pamela, do you have anything to add? No, like you've you've summarized everything that I have. So okay, all right. Um, the next topic is what town hall accessibility oh yes do you have yeah. anything to report on that so i do so i wrote to both uh dave zomek and rob mora 
and I heard back from, from both of them. Um, so uh, Rob wrote back that they are currently working to meet a deadline for ARPA projects. So the town still has some remaining ARPA funds and pursuant to the federal um, revised federal uh, guidelines, those funds have to be under contract uh, relatively soon and or the town has to return them back to the federal government. So um, planning and pretty much every other department that has access to ARPA is scrambling to get those uh, funds under contract. So he wrote, we're currently working to meet the deadline for ARPA projects and will likely pick up on the town hall um, accessible route study late winter or spring. Once we identify a design option, we'll introduce the project into a future year of the capital plan as required by the town manager. We'll also look at a couple of potential grant opportunities after we have a design. So that was his response. So is that what he, I'm, I'm a little confused. Is that what he's thinking they will spend the ARPA funds to do? No, I, I think the ARPA funds are designated for other projects and um, and they um, are going to concentrate in, on getting those funds under contract. And then once that occurs, we'll uh, turn their attention to this issue in the late winter or, or early spring. Okay. Um, anybody have any questions or comments about what we just heard? Jim, it looks like you're talking, but you're muted. There we go. Hey, uh, okay. Here I am. Um, just, you know, the town has been out of compliance since, I don't know, 1997 or something like that. And honestly, well before that, but at least since that last significant renovation. And I just think we need to keep that in mind, that if they come back and say, well, you know, in our plan, we're going to get to it in 2028 or something like that, that really should not be acceptable to us. It's not an issue right today, but it's something that we need to keep in mind. Thank you for saying exactly what I was going to say. Um, I thought you would. <laughs> Do you know? um, uh, all right. So, uh, yeah, you know, again, that response is minimally acceptable. Um, but it won't be acceptable if the year that they put it in the capital plan isn't FY26, which is the next one. They can't put it in for 25 because that's already probably budgeted. So they will get the study in 25. And, and we have to insist that they begin work in earnest. Whether it gets completed in 26, I don't know because I don't know what's involved in it or what will be involved in it. But um, kicking the can down the road isn't gonna work too, long, too much longer. Um, that's sort of what I think. And I think that's what Jim thinks. And I'm sure that's what the rest of us think. Okay, um, all right. So we can move on. Um, now that we've heard the response, we have to keep vigilant. So I suppose we need to put that on our February agenda to make sure that they're working on it, right? Okay, next um, is about the becoming. The update. Um, I'm sorry, say that again, please. I'm sorry, it's the update yeah. on the change from committee to commission. Yeah, do you have one of those? Y yes, so I have, a, um, I can share with you information that Athena shared with Paul. So. The council has pretty much completed their work because they voted to approve acceptance of the statute. So, um, so Athena wrote to Paul um, just now, two weeks ago, a reminder of the things that are now in his um, in his under his purview, which is that he needs to finalize the new charge for the commission on disability and appoint the new uh, members. He, I know one of the things that Athena had asked was for him to share 
what the process would be for current members to express their desire to remain on the new commission and, um, and what the term limits would be um, to ask for that detail. So she wrote, a reminder that you need to first finalize the new commission on disability charge, appoint members for, the, uh, for a council approval, and then dissolve the, um, the current DAAC. Uh, she has shared with, the, with you, members of the DAAC, that they may need to submit a new community, um, uh, I think it's, I wanna say, I wanna say action, but that's not the correct word. A new form uh, expressing your desire to be on the new commission. There's, a, a, I think it's a community participation form. But she's trying to um, to she's asked um, Paul to make that determination whether a new form needs to be submitted or whether you can continue in your current role. Um, and she's the only action for the council to take is approval of the appointments once that has uh, occurred. And um, and then she shared with him that she's strong that you know that that you as a committee have strongly urged him to support a nine member board. So, um, so that's the update and um, neither she nor I have heard from him um, um, in response to, to her information. And Pat has her hand uh, raised. Yes, yeah, I was hoping Pat did. <laughs> um, Go for not, it. <laughs> I don't have anything really valuable. I just wanna say the form is called a CAF, C-A-F, Citizens Activity Form. Okay. Um, so people are looking for that, but I can do some checking. I have, I think that because the, the committee is going to be dissolved, you will all have to fill out a new CAF, which is a pretty neutral form. And, and depending, you may have to write statements of interest, but I'll try to track down exactly what needs to happen. That, that's what, if I were applying to join the committee as a resident, I'd fill out a CAF. If I uh, and then when I found out when appointments were going to be made, I would send a or interviews were going to happen. I would do a statement of interest, an SOI, and then I would wait to hear whether they want to interview me or not. Generally, if you have the SOI in, you are interviewed. Uh, and there's is that value. part of the is that part of the form? It's a separate form from the CAF. Where so do you find that? Well, don't worry about that yet because it has to go through the uh, commission will have the seeking members of the commission uh, and when the statement of interest is due will have to be published in the paper. And when that happens, you would have time to, to do that. Um, there is great value in maintaining the members that are currently on the committee. And I don't think that Paul will that that will be problematic because there are still new positions to go on. But I will tr uh, try to set up a conversation with him. That would be great. Yeah. Thank and you. If, Athena is the best person to talk to about any kind of process like this. She's amazing. Right. Okay. Because I just want to point out that the meetings with Athena and uh, Marty Smith and Pamela and me, I believe, took place in April. I think that's right. Because um, Marty left the committee in May. And she was part of writing um, and meeting with Athena. So it's been a while. Just, just saying. Okay. All right. Next. Sarah has her hand raised. Oh, okay. Sarah, go for it. Okay, so I'm so sorry. I'm getting forgetful as age related, I guess. I hope <laughs> only that. Um, what were the um, status of the president, president DAAC members as we transfer into commission? Are, you know, we are all appointed for for certain length of terms, is it going to carry over in that way? Or are we going to start a new term with the transfer? And if so, how long are the terms for? That is not very clear in my mind. So that I can answer. 
Um, okay. The way okay. that it is in the statute is when the committee uh, commission is appointed, all the members have to be reappointed. Some will be reappointed for one year. Some will be reappointed for two years. Some will be reappointed for three years so that we have the rotation built in when they appoint. So if you want to be reappointed, for example, you could say I could do a one year and then I'd run or not run for or, or try to get another appointment. If you want if you want a longer term association, you would ask for a longer appointment. If you want a shorter term association, you would ask for a shorter term. Um, but there will be one, two and three year positions available on the new commission so that it people just uh, the rotation is created. And then as people um, get to the end of their term, they just can renew or the town manager would decide what to do. But that's the way it'll be. So everybody gets to decide what they'd like to ask for as far as a term. And I then see. it's up to the town manager to decide who gets what. But anyway, does that answer your question? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So are we going to website city now? We are indeed. And I am going to try <laughs> to share my screen. Okay. So I just want to put a little background here. When I, um, we've never really looked at this in depth. And we've never looked at it in depth for content. We've never looked at it in, de in depth for accessibility. And um, I think it's time for us to do that. So there are two discussions really one has to do with what should be on the website for the DAAC, what should be on the website for the, the town main page directing people to the DAAC. So it would just be a, you know, a, a brief description of the DAAC. And, uh, you know, so it has to have good language. And then we need to get to the actual DAAC or Commission on Disability web page, which doesn't have very much on it. Um, and this is not a one-time conversation um, because it's complicated. Um, the more, I mean, I'm not a big website user, I have to say, of anything. I tried, you know, I know they're there when I desperately need to look for something I do, but I'm not a person who just looks at websites for fun. Um, but if I were, I'd know a whole lot more about this. Um, that's why I'm really glad that Rob Eberly is here. Um, and I, I think we can break it down into two areas. One, what is the content we want? And two, have they created it according to W, oh my God, uh, AG2, Website Accessibility Guidelines 2. 2.1, 2.2, .2, whatever it is, because um, that's what the law says right now. Um, so, um, yeah. Uh, um, two, well, well, I guess one question. Um, so Saren, Jim, Ian, Cody, can you all see the Disability Access Advisory Committee webpage? Yes. On your, okay, yes. so, okay, because I'm trying to screen, oh, and, um, Elise, oh, yeah, um, I can see some of it. Um, yeah, it's it's very pale. the The font is very pale. I wish they would darken it, but that's not that's a whole other discussion. Yeah, I can see it. Okay, some of it. Okay, all right, and um, so Myra, um, Councillor Steinberg just uh, joined us. Do you want to ah. table? Oh, maybe we should. Here? Should we do that little part of it and then come back to this? I think you maybe you should. Okay. All right. And Myra, I'm right. and the committee, I'm going to have to leave. You're from, leaving. Okay. Yeah, thank you. All right. Well, thank you for your thank help. You. Thanks for sending us the documents. Okay. Thank you for your talk with Paul about the COD. Whoops. <laughs> In advance. All right. Take anyway, care. thank you. Um, Andy, thank you for being here. We're gonna move your topic. 
um, this intersection to uh, right now. And I guess what we need to know is what the timeline is for decision making um, at this point, because we don't know really anything about this. Um, and this is a really, um, Pat said the magic word, which is roundabout, which seems like it's being proposed. And two of us are already freaking out about that. So why don't you tell us what is envisioned as far as timing for making this decision and what they're thinking about? I need to let you know about that at our next meeting. I'm not going to be able to answer the question today uh, because that's a question that I actually need to get clarified myself. I think that the, the, the basic problem that they have is that the uh, school is opening in uh, September of 26. And uh, the question is, initially, do they have the funding and do they have the desire to complete the changes to the street before uh, the new school opens with the much larger student attendance that will take place uh, when they have uh, uh, moved the Wildwood and uh, Fort Rivers K-5 uh, K-5 students together in one building. And so it's uh, those are the questions, the money and uh, the desire to complete it. It, it. Do they desire to complete it before the school opens? And those are initial questions that we need to pose in order to develop a schedule for how uh, the uh, town services and outreach committee is going to proceed to approach this and make a recommendation to the council. I think it's going to be a difficult discussion for the committee. It's going to be a difficult discussion for um, all of you who normally give us input on these issues. It's going to be a difficult issue for the schools who are going to give us uh, input there's just a whole lot that's in there and um, the timeline question that you started with really uh i can't answer today okay so we don't know when they're going to make this decision okay so can you i mean apparently some people have been have thrown out some ideas about what what they are thinking they want to do? Well, the stat, the obviously, the what you saw came from uh, DPW staff. Most of us council. haven't seen it. <clears throat> well, those are the documents that I tried to forward to you. Right, but they're not. They weren't easy to find, and I don't know if anyone actually read them. Well, I didn't expect that your entire committee would. I tried to get uh, get as much to you over the weekend, but uh, we ran into the technical difficulties. Uh, the the you had you had problems with my initial suggestion of pulling them out of uh, the uh, meeting packet from the council. Well, the document but, center isn't isn't easy to use. Um, you have to use the screen reader. It's not easy. In any event, uh, the uh, we are, you know, we are um, moving forward, but very slowly. And all we're going to be doing at our next meeting is to try and uh, develop a fairly comprehensive list of questions that are occurring to numbers of people um, on the council. Uh, I did get a memo from TAC and uh, we're going to try and put together questions that we need to pose about this. And uh, I think that the thing that um, is difficult is, is that there's no good solution. That if you're familiar with the street, you're familiar with the uh, traffic, particularly 
when in the morning and the evening because a lot of university bound traffic takes southeast street to get up to um, campus without having to go through the center of town if they're coming from the south or the east you know belcher town or south amherst and coming up in in that direction so um anybody who's driven that street uh in the eight nine o'clock range knows that it's already busy for that and then you add during school days the 180 days of school or whatever it is you add that traffic to it it is a huge problem so those are the um the challenges is to get something that is going to um, handle the traffic, be safe for the students, be safe for everybody, um, and flow well and not inhibit the streets unduly during times when there isn't quite as much heavy traffic. I think that's going to be a real challenge, um, and it's going to be hard to come up with the perfect solution. Um, but uh, we need to start the process now, and I wanted to my, my original goal was, of course, just to alert you to what was going on so that you wouldn't be blindsided, that you would know within a week of when we knew. Well, I really actually appreciate the early notice. Hadn't thought about it at all. When we talked about the school, I hadn't even thought about it. Um, and it looks like a lot of other people didn't think about it either. Um, so there are, there. I mean, you're right, it's going to be a mess. Um, I guess the first thing is I would ask, do you want us to propose, to come up with any early thoughts to add to your questions? Is that what you want? If you have any questions that you can send to us, we would add them to our list and compare. What I suspect is that, uh, a lot of us are going to come up with similar questions. I mean, they're not even going to venture what they are, but I, I think that uh, we're all intelligent people and we're all going to be looking at that critically and thinking, we understand the problem, but did you think about this? Why this? Um, isn't this a problem? Have you thought about, you know, whatever. Um, I think that the that there's going to be some similarity and we're going to be able to take the questions from uh, your committee members and um, tech committee members and council members and uh, we're going to be able to compress that to something that can then be forwarded to DPW and uh, the town manager and try and find a uh, time when they can make a presentation to us in a more logical fashion. And uh, we'll have some opportunity to have some dialogue about it. Okay, would it be fair to Hi, say Andrew, that instead of the I word- I have a very quick question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, it, has it ever been, uh, I know that road very well because it's kind of on my way to the town or downtown so but I don't really know inside the lot where the building the new building is going to be constructed have they looked into whether there could be access from main street upper you know not toward that's what the, I thought too yeah toward Belcher town sort of or from route nine Maybe it might be more cumbersome. It might be a longer, but it is safer for the traffic and everything. Just another consideration. Um, That's what I thought too. There are buildings in the way. Yeah, um, but you know, sometimes buildings yeah, disappear with eminent domain. I don't domain. think the town owns that land. And that. And if that's correct, if we're correct on that, then you get into a cost factor issue also. But this a uh, but this school project was going to be finished under what the first 
estimated cost would be. So there might be a little money that would be saving from that. Couldn't that be applied for providing better access to the school systems? That was just um, a thought in my mind. Yeah. No, I think those are the kinds of things that um, we need to ask, but because uh, but my initial questions are going to be on Thursday when we're going to be asking for answers. I'm going to send a note to the town manager later today um, that we just understand the schedule because that's where you started. And that is a logical question. We need to know the timeline that we're working with and why. So when I get that answer, I can send it on to Myra. Okay, so we need to know the timeline. Um, I guess um, Myra, right now, Elisa's, Elisa's had her hand up for a while too. Oh, go for it, Elise. This is maybe a premature question, but one thought that I had, um, and it's just not the smartest question. Why that location? If they were really having a, a traffic issue and it sounds like some very unsafe things that could happen for kids, um, yeah. Why that location? Why not pick? Well, they location? decided it, and it's under construction already. It's uh, sort of like, yeah. It's a good question. That, um, you know, I I was not on the elementary school building committee. The elementary school building committee had to make a decision between: do they build at the Wildwood location or do they build at the Ford River location? Yeah. Uh, the committee. Um, was looking to the advantages of uh, the the larger amount of land, the ability to build the building further away from the existing building so that they wouldn't be uh, un, um, unduly uh, limiting the activity mm. going on in the current school while the new school is being built. They talk, you know, they thought about the amount of uh, playground area that would be available afterwards they they were thinking about it from those terms and i do not recall if that watching that meeting because i just watched it on zoom i did not you know i was a member of the committee so i wasn't attending uh, and they i do not recall that there was any discussion about this issue I think safety is really important. I mean, if my if a kid can't get to the school safely, then well, it's yeah. too late now. Well, it should have been thought of. I'm dissatisfied. Uh, with that, that that you you may or you may be right about that, but yeah, you know the the, the it's under construction. It's you know designed. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, already prepared the the you know the, what they had to do is actually in order because it's uh the one disadvantage to the area was is it was wet they brought in a lot of dirt that built up the base on which they're building the building so that it's farther from the water table uh <laughs> they you know the there there it's go you know it's a gone decision and we've just... now have to come up with the best plan we can to deal with it Okay, I'm done playing devil's advocate. I just think it should have been part of the decision in the beginning. Uh, that's my uh, that's my two good cents. Question. Uh, I, I yeah. have to say that the uh, the key town members <laughs> of the committee, for, uh, which were at that time uh, uh, town manager and the then director of uh, finance, uh, Ben Gano, voted for the Wildwood location because. I think that they saw this coming, but uh, it was uh, the, the the school members of the committee out uh, outvoted, and uh, decision right. was made. We are stuck with the decision. So the All question right. is: I think Saren raises one very good question, which is. Can you enhance the access by obtaining some land 
or some easement through Main Street or through Route 9? Yes. And I think that's a very good question. And I, I mean, if you want to put that down, Andy, as one of our questions, um, my question, and this isn't the end of this conversation, but my question has to do with the safety for kids who will be walking to school on Main yeah. Street from the east and the west and from Route 9 on the east. Very Absolutely. few kids are going to walk on Route yeah. 9 from the west, but there are going to be kids who are going to be walking to school. Or bicycling and, even. You know. and Or riding a bike, precisely, yeah. um, on yep. very dangerous streets. And if you're going to put in a roundabout, yeah, you can say, oh, yes, there will be a crossing guard. And there will be. There's always a crossing guard. That crossing guard leaves a half an hour after school gets out or less. What if a kid stays after to play in the playground with their friends and wants to go home? How are they going to get through that intersection in the afternoon? Um, get killed. And that's the safety of walking and biking kids is uh, terrifying me. Um, um, and I, I think that kids in my neighborhood, not that any of them are mine, but the kids in my neighborhood are the ones who are going to be walking because I think we're slightly under a mile and I think they're going to have to walk. Um, we might be nine tenths of a mile. Maybe we're exactly more than a mile. I don't know, but there are lots of kids over here who are going to be walking and there are kids in, um, there's a couple car apartment complexes on the south side of Main Street. Those kids are going to be walking. They have to cross the street. Yeah. Um, and there are kids east of um, east of the intersection also who are going to be walking. So the whole notion of kids walking to cross a roundabout is terrifying to me. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and there will be more traffic there because this is going to combine several elementary schools. So there will be more students attending that. So that means more increased traffic as compared to what it is right now. Well, one thing I want to say is that in its heyday, and Andy's kids and my kids are the same age, and so his kids went through this too, Fort yes. River and Wildwood had just about 500 kids each at one point. This is going to be more than 500, but it's not yeah. going to be a thousand. I think they're saying 580 kids. So it is more than Fort River School ever had in its heyday, but it's not extremely more. So there have to be people who have experienced that intersection when there were lots of buses. There were not as many buses then as there will be now. That's the difference because the buses are going to come from all over the town um, right. except the South. Um, but um, there, you know, there were always kids who, uh, there were always, at one point, there were that many kids um, or close to that many kids in the school. I don't know if as many parents dropped their kids off. I don't know if more kids took the bus. I don't know if there can be incentives to make kids take the bus. I don't know anything about that. But um, the, the, and there were not as many people at UMass, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, walking kids is, is paramount. As far as dis, kids with disabilities getting yep. to the school, they will... Um, get a uh, van service to go to the school so they don't need to um, it's not so much a disability issue except for parents with disabilities who walk their kids to school or who get their kids to school some other way but the kids with disabilities will will be able to get van service to get to school um I mean, that's the way they do it. On my street, there are two kids who get van service to go to school. Um, so I I think, I don't know. I, does anybody else have any concerns um, besides the walking and biking kids? 
and the main street access. Oh, the roundabout. I don't like uh, that roundabout. The roundabout. Yeah, okay, so we don't like the roundabout no. from the get-go. Um, there is a possibility. There is a service road there that runs up along the east side of the common. The west side, I'm sorry. The service road is on the west side of the common. Maybe that could be utilized to have traffic going in one direction. And that piece of Southeast Street that's over there could only be one way, um, which might make it a little bit easier to get in and out, that you could go have the traffic going around the green there. Do you know what I mean, Andy? Yeah, I know. I've actually thought about that, too. That's um, what struck me as, the, as one question, why not do that? It beats the heck out of a roundabout. Because... I think we also need to know, remember that their um, plans to take, we're in the old school location that's on the west side yeah. of that common, they're building uh, affordable housing. And so that there will be presumably kids living over there. Aha, the okay. So... We but do need, that little we piece of road, that. that little piece of road could be improved. Maybe a tiny piece of the green could be taken away so that there's enough on that service road so that people can just drive in one way and out the other way, like in from Main Street. Then you make a left around the green and you go out on the west, on the east side um, toward the north. You know, you go south at the the west side and then you go around the green you go out to the north um and maybe that would help yeah. but but you'd be able to still have a light you still be able to have a light at each corner controlling the intersection which you lose in a roundabout i mean in some ways you could almost create that around that green to be a um simulated roundabout <laughs> Um, if you, do you understand what I'm saying? I I I, I know too, exactly what you're talking about. I've thought about that too. The um, uh, the challenge that that is there, and I th um, I don't know if you've looked at the diagram for the school itself, but uh, the way that Fort River historically has worked is there was an entrance, then a parking section, and school bus drop off area in front of the current school and the exit that was closer to Main Street, um, which came out you know, near that law office and accountant's office that's in the old tavern building in the corner. And in the, um, they've already done change because, but the plan is that uh, what had been the entrance will only be for school buses and the school buses will come in that way and go out that way. And the, uh, the automobile traffic and parent drop off will be from all in and out of the same place, which is actually what they're doing now during construction. Um, and it's, uh, which is of course, pretty close to Main Street. So what you have is you have essentially four intersections in fairly close proximity to each oh other, God. Main Street, then the one that automobiles will be coming in and out of the school, then the point where the uh, road that runs around uh, the common comes in is across from uh, what is going to be the school bus entrance and exit. And then you have uh, College Street. So you have four intersections in a very uh, short period. Okay, well, uh, I guess we've said what we can say at this point, which is we want to be involved in further discussion. We believe in stoplights and safe crossing 
with stoplights. We 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 worry about roundabouts for kids that are going to be crossing the street walking. We are can we are um we I mean everything you've just said lends more credence to what Elise said earlier, which is why didn't anybody think about this? Um so I think I don't know how much more we can say at this point. If you point. have additional questions that anybody don't hesitate to send them to my email address, which is like a standard uh, town address, Steinberg A at AmherstMA.gov. Um, we'll begin to work on it. I'm sure we'll be adding questions afterwards. We're going to try and do as much as we can this Thursday and come up with a better understanding of what the timeline is for this um, to have to be decided and when they envision that they need to do something to address the, the traffic problem, whether they're going to want to do that before or at the time that the school opens. Uh, but those are the those are the immediate things that we're working on. Okay, so I think we gave you our questions, right? Well, I mean, I think of them as ideas more than questions, but um, go in. Well, there was a couple of questions about whether there's any possibility of acquiring land that will allow an access to the north right. or the south that is not onto Southeast Street. Right. I think that's actually the best one that Sarah brought up. Use, using the funds that will be left from the initial project. Well, now there won't be the any funds work. left over. There are never any funds left over. But they the said the bids came much lower than they expected. Yeah, because... the bids came in less. There is yeah. some uh, uh, <laughs> miscalculation someplace. <laughs> There are always change orders. There are, I mean, yeah, you know. They, they, I, um, we don't know the answers to the amount of funds that are going to be available and how much funds, because that is another question that we obviously, as counselors, need to ask is, you know, how have they plan to fund this road construction work? And uh, where, where's... Well, uh, <clears throat> well, I'd like to know what the proposed project was and what the uh, bid that was accepted is going to be and uh, because I can't remember but I know it was uh, pretty high and they were the gazette was saying good news you know because the bids came much lower than they thought it would be so that might be some way at least we can say well don't touch that money because that is going to be used for access to in and out entrance that might need more additional uh, land to be acquired. So just a thought. Um, oh, we'll okay. get into the money question. Uh, don't worry about that. And we'll keep you informed <laughs> as we go. Well, I do worry about that, you know, because I pay big taxes, <laughs> real estate taxes. So, and we don't want that to be uh, affected unnecessarily. All right. Yeah. So, okay. you know, our, you know, some of our ideas, um, please keep us in the loop. Although this was short notice, I understand now why it was pretty critical that you come to us. Um, and um, please continue to keep us informed. I appreciate actually all the emails from you about every project that DPW is going to, uh, is doing, and they're doing a lot. Um, the pot wine one is the best designed of all of them. Um, I think it was probably the simplest, but it was, it's good, and um, we always we always have uh, input. We need more micro input. They build things in the end, not according to what they should, but that's a whole other issue. Anyway, um, okay, thank you for bringing this to okay, our Okay, well, thank you. And hopefully you have some um, beginnings of ideas from us.
Yes. And uh, it's good seeing all of you. There's uh, been some number of members of the committee I've known for years uh, when I was on the select board and was liaison to this committee. Yes. And oh, cool. from other places. <laughs> so it's good seeing everybody again. <laughs> well, oh, Saren's the only old timer, really, other than me. Yeah. But I, we I was off for twenty at, years. Uh, yeah, we lost some members, <laughs> and yeah. uh, we used to meet regularly in at Stavros. Great, <laughs> that's right. But well, thank you so much. Okay, Andy, yeah, thank you for your we appreciate concern it. and thank sharing you. it with us. Thank you. Okay. 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 All right. Bye bye. So, Myra, before we um, go on to the back to the website agenda item, I just want to state for the record that that prior discussion on the um, intersection improvements for Southeast Street, and Main Street, and College Street was done um, pursuant to other business not anticipated not, right. within 48 hours. 48 hours. Right. Right. Okay. Thank you for saying that. I didn't say that. I knew that, but I didn't say it. Okay. Um, back to the website. So it's does um I I thought about how to how to talk about this, and it's not a one time conversation. Um, I I guess I wonder. Uh, I'm going to ask Rob Eberly for some wise counsel about how we might begin this conversation. Do you deal with the content first? Do you deal with, what do you do? And how, what what do you see on our website that you think we need to zero in on? So I'm gonna promote him to a panelist so he can join okay. the conversation. All right, at least I'm gonna attempt to, there he is, okay. A uh, quick question, is this something that we get to scroll down or is this just one paragraph no. we're looking at? I, I will scroll down. I just uh, didn't, so I will. I will oh, okay, gotcha. Um, Thank you. Rob, are you there? I Whoa. think I am, can you, you hear me? You, yes, we can, we can hear you. Okay, Super. so you have been incredibly kind and have come to a number of our meetings um, without our asking you to say anything. And you're much more expert at this than any of us. We're just sort of users. And I confess to not being much of a website user because they're usually a pain in the neck. And I'm, I just go to get what I need and I leave. Um, I don't know that other people have more use than I do, but how do people go about analyzing these websites before we can offer suggestions for recreation? or improvement, let's put it that way. Uh, all, all sounds great. I, I would add that you are you are an expert. If, if you're a user and you can tell us what doesn't work, then you're an expert. That That's kind of the whole, right? That really helps uh, with, with any of this, with accessibility or usability. Um, so, uh, so can you see me? I'm not seeing myself on the screen. Don't ask me. I'm, I'm, I know, Myra, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, 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 know. I can. Yes, we okay, okay. can see you. So good. People yeah. can see you. Me too. I can see. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm used to, I thought it was Zoom when I spoke, I would see myself and I'm not. So, um, all right. So, so th things to say, um, what, what would I want to say? Um, I, I was jotting down notes just 10, 10 minutes ago and just about what I would say if I had a couple of minutes just to share with you. And, and so, what I would say is, right, the idea of doing a web review makes a lot of sense, and I don't know the history of doing a web review, but you can do some very simple web, web reviews and, and get an idea and fix or, you know, address issues with with just the kind of most basic review. Now, the, the new rules that came from the Department of Justice are significant. WCAG, um, WCAG, Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, 2.1 AA is, I, I believe it might be 80 pages worth of guidelines, and so it's a deep dive. So there's something that I refer to also from the Web Accessibility Initiative, the same folks that make WCAG, um, called Easy Checks, which is basically a list of 10 
common web accessibility issues. Um, of which, if I may be so bold, looking at the screen right now, I'll see one um, right at the top there. It says, "Click here for more information." So um, that would be that would be an example of something you can kind of hit right off the bat and say, "Does that link make sense out of context?" Right? Um, a screen reader user may do a links list, and they have "click here for more information." Um, but they don't, you know, one, one wouldn't know what that means. And I'm just giving an example of what easy checks are, you right? That's the, an, here comes out on your links list. Right, exactly. Click, cl click here is the classic is click right. here. Doesn't, yeah. It doesn't have enough context when no. it's accessed, you know, no. it doesn't have enough information. Right. So that's just an example. So, so what I wrote down is I just really quickly wrote down these things that I think would be something to think about. Some sort of web review, and it can be the, the simplest web review, spot checks, easy checks, to get an idea of where things are. Um, and then, of course, then there's the idea of if you find issues or uh, barriers is fixing them. And so that takes energy also. Um, but the other two things I really I wrote down, um, actually three. Um, one I'm very fond of is at the at the, at to the bottom of the web page something to the effect: If you're having trouble accessing anything on this website, here's a personal link, an email, a form that you can use to get an all an alternative access to to say I need help, and that's simply referred to as notice. Um, where you have a notice at the bottom that says, and actually, maybe I should know. I, I actually, Pamela, if you scroll at the bottom, is there a notice? I don't know. I don't see anything. No. Okay. Well, what do we got? Nope. I think at some place on the main web page there is. Um, I think there is for additional information contact. Okay, but, but it's nice to have something very specific that yeah. says, you know, if you're having. Um, if you've encountered an accessibility barrier, here's how you can get help. Um, you know, it's not ideal, right? Because we want real time. We don't want time to be something, but it's certainly better than than not knowing how to. So I would just say an, an, e an easy thing to add is that. The other is this idea, these two larger things are the idea of training for P anyone who's putting stuff up on the website. And that can be very short or or more deep, depending on a person's role. And maybe that's, this has already taken place, honestly. Uh, maybe the IT department has already done this. I know you've got IT folks uh, working on this. And then the other is, do you really need an individual policy for the town? And I don't necessarily have an answer for that. Um, but it's nice to have a policy because it helps you, one, to say, here's what we need to do. The policy could just say, we really have these new, new rules from the Department of Justice, and we need to follow them. Um, the other thing is I like the uh, the words to simplify it when the policy, it can say basically stop buying broken things, right? When you're adopting new technologies, stop buying things that don't work for everyone. Um, so, so that was all very fast. Perhaps I was speaking too fast, um, but I, I did just want to mention these things. I think, I, I believe the question to me was, you know, what, what are we what do we do about that? You know, just some sort of web review. And, and, and I'd be happy to do the simplest of web review as I just kind of did today. I said, I see a click here link. I could probably just check a couple other short things, maybe just, oh, I remember actually I did this about a month ago. I had a look and there was a long list of PDFs. Um, and I don't know, Pamela, if you scroll up, if that was easy to find, it would be under probably something like resources. Um, if, unless I'm making this up. Uh, a little higher, maybe, on the left, I'm going to guess. If you scroll, scroll up. Yeah, let's try links on the far left. And... Right. Th this would be, see, this would be the mm. hardest part if, if, if we were to look at the accessibility. This is always right. All of a sudden, it is the, you know, the deep dive. So um, what we're seeing here is a bunch of links. I can't actually see, but I think there's at least 20 more called additional resources. And for each link is a new, dare I say, risk for an accessibility barrier. And yep. likely, these, these are all links to things that we have no control over anyways. They're links to other people's websites. Um, 
So I just bring that up as a sample. That, you know, and and to what Myra was saying, which is this is not easy. This is complicated no. or it can be complex. Um, if, you know, we have a page with 20 links on it. Um, well, that really opens things up. And that is why you put a notice at the bottom that says if you are having um, any issues accessing content on this website, let us know and, and we'll we'll help. We'll, we'll, we'll aim to make the, the content. It's about communication, right? I mean, that's what we're doing with the Internet in general, or at least for these web pages. Not too interactive. It's mostly about information. So I don't know if that was uh, too rambling, um, but I do like the idea of some sort of easy checks web review or even simpler, the idea of, of fixes. I guess maybe there's interfacing with the IT department and maybe they're well aware of this and they might have someone who's gone through a training, but the idea of training. I will also add there is a significant new um, initiative at the state level. Um, I will call it Executive Order 614 from the governor that says uh, digital accessibility is being addressed as a priority and they've got a whole new team. They've got an access team in their Ooh. IT department. And it has come, I sit in on their meetings as a member of the public and it has come up that they wanna train, they wanna train their staff for the whole state, but it's also come up how towns and, um, and schools will also need help with this where, um, and so I thought this was a perfect example because it's been fun. I've been able to sit in on your meetings and to see, indeed, it, wouldn't it be great if they offered up the training here I just brought up and they had a, a module that could be shared with all the towns. And I think we're going to see if this does happen. So they are, and they're, act, they're moving very reactively to the new DOJ rules from April, um, which says, you know, some, some folks have two years and some folks have three years, depending on the size of... Uh, your entity, I believe. Myra, is that right? Yeah, and I actually, even the third party linked websites, um, if you link to it, it has to be accessible or you can't link to it. That'll be after three years probably, right? Yeah. Isn't that right? That was part of the rule making about yeah. any third party. Um... Uh, I mean, the answer is yes. Um, you know, really I would argue that there's, is there really any reason that the deadline isn't now? Well, I, I've, I've, I've always yeah, thought the ADA is they didn't the do it. <laughs> right. People can't all, be in violation is, from the beginning. All the DOJ did is clarify that the ADA applies to the web yeah. and said, and if this is really a surprise to anyone, we'll give you some time. But really, to me, the deadline is as soon as possible, if yeah. not yesterday. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, so I guess my question is, and I, um, I don't know. I mean, maybe we ought to look at a good town website there is there a website anywhere that you know of that the disability commission uh page is really exemplary in what it actually uh has on it right let's get away from accessibility at the moment to content do you know of have you seen a town website that's pretty exemplary and that has a uh, really good disability commission page um because we've never really had any input into what's on our page i don't know maybe maureen did pamela i don't know that they've ever asked you have they whoops pamela's I'm sorry did, did you say something to me yeah i wanted to I'm know sorry. if anyone from the town ever asked you about whether you think anything should be added nope. to or deleted from the web page nobody spoke to me about anything no i was talking about pamela oh oh yeah sorry <laughs> sorry i'm confused i thought i heard my name yeah no i'm sorry but i don't hear pamela either i think Pam pamela it seems like your zoom is not working you your mouth is moving but no one can hear what you were saying She's pointing that she's going to come into my office right now. This is Philip, by the way, Myra. Oh, okay. Philip, I'm sorry. I didn't even realize. Oh, you, you were all right. Don't worry about it. She is on her way and she will be here right now. She did warn us that her Zoom was acting strangely. Yes. 
So um, what I was attempting to say is that the town has hired a new communications director, Sam Giffen. Um, Philip and I actually met with her last week to talk about uh, this web page as well as um, our web page and the web page for the Human Rights Commission. Um, she did attend uh, the training on the new regulations that happened in the spring, and I think a member of our IT staff um, did as well. Uh, so I, I believe that we're, as a, as a town, we're working to comply, but you know it's the very beginnings of the process. And um, we had suggested, we, uh, the committee had suggested that we invite her to the November meeting. Um, it looks like we might, you all might need more time to review the website and we can push that off and maybe um, invite her to the December meeting. And That's then, what I'm thinking. Huh. I, I'm wondering if anyone from the town ever asked you to uh, add to or delete from the content of the page. Um, so, so yes, I, I have, um, uh, I have asked members of the town to delete, uh, content based on what my thinking was. And there are some towns, um, um, I think on the East coast, I'll have to go back and look that, uh, that I think have exemplary pages just in explaining the work of the, what would be the commission on disability. And I can share that with the group. Oh, that's great. That's what I really want to know. I want to know about, before we get into the weeds of accessibility, I think we need to be clear about what the what the page should tell the people of the town of Amherst um, about um, matters related to disability. So it might have to do with special projects. It might have to do with, um, you know, who you contact if, might have to do with emergency procedures, for people with disabilities, like we were talking about with Saren last year um, in the winter, um, it might have to do with a lot of things um, that we we haven't, I, you know, I've been on this committee now five years. We've never been asked for input onto the onto the website. Um, and I think it's, so we need to know if you have some ideas that of models that we could look at, that we could determine um, if we want to use any of it or modify any of it for ourselves, that would be really helpful, I think. I, I don't even know where to start. I mean, you can look and you can guess maybe Watertown um, has a good website because they have a real active commission. Maybe Cambridge has a good website because Cambridge tends to do things well. I don't know. Um so I'm, I'm happy to uh, to send out the links um, to those websites for, for folks to take some time and review. Fabulous. Okay, that's very helpful. All right. Um, so I, now that we know we can get some help with this, is there anybody who has anything, have you ever looked for anything on the town website related to disability or not that you couldn't find easily? Anybody on the commit on the committee? I mean, all I do check with the website is uh, to pay bills, e bills. Wait, but I'm sorry, I couldn't hear what I, you said. I, I mean, I uh, try to find a place to pay e bills, electronic bills, you know. To pay bills, okay. But, yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, but it's not the easiest either. You know it just is a little challenge. Sometimes I find it easier, sometimes not as easy, but I haven't really checked any other issues uh, on disability, so. Okay, all right, that's um, that's one thing that has to do with how easy it is to pay, pay yes. bills. Actually, yes, that's often, even with a screen reader, that's often a rabbit hole. Um, yeah that people go into and you end up not being able to do what you want to do. So that was a good thing that we need to look into. Anybody else? Myra, this is Ian. Um, yeah. I have sometimes had trouble finding on the um, uh, town calendar when either town council meetings or school committee meetings are. Um, 
and and I eventually find them, but it 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 is wow. not straightforward. Yeah, that would be my experience as well. Um, and I sometimes find them more easily than my husband does, and he can see it. So it's not only a it's not only a screen reader issue. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it might not be under um uh website accessibility it might just be organization of a website you know what i mean there are some things that probably fit within the law but that don't work well anyway if that makes any right. sense <laughs> yeah um so that was good okay two things good the calendar is difficult paying bills is difficult um Oh, and I, I would just add in in addition to the calendar, like finding the agendas for for those meetings um, is is difficult sometimes too. Okay. You know, there's one thing I'm going to say that drives me nuts. I'm on the list of all the you know, like I get these emails from the town that you can sign up for to get um, information on various topics. So I get, you know, a few a, a few emails a day from the town about this or that. And, you know, if they have any announcements, I get that. And it says, it'll give you the first seven or eight or 10 words of an announcement. And then it'll refer you to the website to get the rest of the announcement. When, if you're just telling me what day the leaf pickup is gonna be, or what day the special, this or that is going to be, then just tell me. Don't make me go search for it on your website. Um, that's one thing mm -hmm. I find very, the announcements that they send out could have more information in them, which would keep people from having to use the website. And maybe that's what they're trying to do is get you on the website. I don't know. But I always find like, why are you ending this in the middle of a sentence? Just give me the next 10 words and then I'll be good. <laughs> Anyway, I don't know if anybody else has that problem, but. A, a, another uh, thought, but I don't know if this AI can be of any assistance with it or not. But for those of us with visual impairments, and would it be uh, achieved if we click on something and then we can have it read to us rather than uh, us trying to read it ourselves. You know, like Maybe for people, example- For wait. people who don't have screen readers. Yes, I mean, like my text, uh, my iPhone, if I get a text and I can just ask smart Siri, hey, read me the last text message or something like that, and she will, or it will. So, you can do a speech command, yeah. You can do that with the with the town website. I I think you can if if I don't. Myra knows more than I do, but you know when I need something read to me, I I can I can have Siri turn on speech command and it reads it. I don't know how people who don't use screen readers usually um, get things to read because I don't read them that way. I have to read I have to use a screen reader for everything. So uh, I don't I don't know what this what the website will do without a screen reader. And I don't know what other people you know what um is Rob still there? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Do you know what websites customarily do as far as um reading the text? I mean, I know that you know if you use the narrator that comes with Microsoft. Um, with comes with Windows, there's a part, there's a place in Microsoft Edge that'll get it to read. Um, but, but I'm not, I don't know anything about what comes on a website for sighted people that can get it to read. Do you? You yeah. do it with your iPhone. Yeah, exactly. I think it's usually the 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 job it's of the iPhone. website. This is Rob. Um, yeah. The job of the website is to make sure the text is indeed access digitally accessible and can be read out. And then people have a variety of devices, a Mac, a PC, yeah. an iPhone, an Android device, which mm. all have their own unique way to render yeah. the text audibly. That's and what so, I was trying to tell you. Yeah. Sorry, Elise. Yep, that's, yep. So Elise, right, you want to take it over? But if you're not using a phone, I was thinking of using a computer. I yeah. mean, yeah. I don't. 
And I hate same. getting website information on my phone. I mean, awesome. I only look on the computer for website stuff unless I'm really you. stuck. I um, bet if it's if it's on an iPhone, I bet it's also on a Mac. If you, do you use a Mac? No. Oh, I okay. use a PC. Okay, then I couldn't tell you. Yeah, but I mean, I I know how to access what I want. I'm just saying yeah. that if I didn't have a screen reader, if I were a low vision person, or if I were just a person like Saren said who wants to have it read to you, I don't know how to do that because I only know how to do it with real access technology. I mean, and I don't know if there are usually devices built in yes, to, yes. you know, screen reader, like the New York Times website uh, has a thing, it's called audio, and the Washington Post website has a thing called, I forget what they call it, but you can have it read to you. Um, but I don't know that normally websites do that. Uh, it's Rob. I, I was going to bring up those two examples, actually, Myra, is that you've got these really big information outlets, and they have decided <laughs> to build audio into their their product. But yep. mostly websites are text or some sort of form of that, and that individuals, whether it's a PC or a mobile device, use something built into their operating systems. And things have got pretty good at this um, yeah. as far as re re reading things aloud. So. Yeah. So I don't know that they, I don't know that our website needs to do that, Sarah. And I think, yeah, I mean, I think uh, people uh, just approach it from their technology. I mean, uh, yep. I'm, I meant not only our uh, webpage inside Town of Amherst webpage, but Town of Amherst webpage. Like, for example, when uh, we got the link for the decision of that roundabout, or proposal for that roundabout. When I clicked that page, it was there was so much material, and I couldn't even uh, with my low vision, and I couldn't even go through all of those at all. You know, so if there was you mean the a, one you got today? Well, I got it last night. Last night, okay, okay, okay. you tried. I couldn't even find yeah. it. Okay, so okay, yeah, all right. Yeah. I was able to find, you know, follow what they were, what Andy was saying. So I was able to go that far. But then it was so much material and it was so difficult for me to read. You know, I have to put this glasses on and that and everything. But if there is a way, okay, just click on this and then it will read that. Yeah, I well, think if you read it in your phone, if you read it in your phone or an iPad, Elise can tell you how to do it. <laughs> um, but um, mm -hmm. in, I don't even know that you put voiceover on Elise, do you? I I, I think I go into setting. I, I don't know how I figured it out, whether I went into settings, but if you go, if you say Siri, turn on speech command, then you can have stuff read and you can even slow down the, um, like, like oh. Myra, I noticed that a lot of blind people, they have, their speech is the speech command goes really fast. Yeah, you can actually you can, you can change it. You can change it. Yeah, I have mm. to look. You know, I'm going to play with it now. I'm curious. Now I'm going to play with it more and share with me too, Elise. What you? Yeah, find. I will email you and share. Okay. share because I, I just do with. it through voiceover that I have on all the time. <clears throat> yeah. Elise doesn't have it on all the time, so no. you whatever she does is the thing that you would want to use, Saren. So yeah, but I'll, I'll email you and, and share my what I come up with. But that's actually an interesting point that you both bring up because in fitting with what Rob has suggested, if there's something that's really lengthy. Oh, it's terrible. Um, maybe <laughs> it should say, like Rob said at the bottom of the page, to have this read aloud on an eye that's device right. do X. To have this read yes. aloud on an Android device, do why? That's right? great. I don't know those commands, yeah. but that is sort of what Rob said, and that's. But I, it's Rob. Mm, that would yeah. be a much that that's a much deeper dive because you're offering tech support for other folks' devices. And that does get much more complicated. I will say, I'm not. I agree with you. It would be helpful, um, but but to try to offer that level of support might be 
difficult. Like step one is make sure I don't I'm not sure if something was shared last night and I do not know if it was text on a website or a PDF. I mean, if it were a PDF that's not accessible in the first place, all those all the following is moot, right? If yeah. if it can't be read aloud, if it was saying I, I don't know. Um but 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 it's a good example is to start still with just make sure the content is accessible and then it's a whole different program of helping people um know their technologies. It's it's an interesting point you make, Myra, is you know, you is it well, I, I how far do you go to support them as far as tech support as opposed to just making content accessible? That's uh No, that's, and it's true. I mean on the one hand, if Saren, if you need support in learning how to make your iPhone read to you, that's not necessarily the town website's problem. I mean, in a way. I mean, I'm looking at it really dispassionately. Oh, I know, I know. It wasn't just... Um, but it's a really important thing because there are plenty of people who can read a page, who can read two pages, but if you're giving them something else to read, um, they, you know, a lot of stuff is difficult for people to read who can read a little bit of stuff. Mm -hmm. So Myra, this is Pamela. I'm going to interrupt because we only have uh, a little over a minute left in the meeting and I have a one o'clock meeting. Okay. Um, All right. So, so two things, um, one, just to bring to everyone's attention, the invitation that you receive from the Natick Commission on Disability about the event that they're having on October 24th. Yep. That did go out by separate email to everyone in the group. So just we received it. Um, I mean, I don't know if anybody wants to go. It takes almost two hours to get there. Yeah. Um, and it's not easy to get there. Nope. So is I don't know if anybody's planning to drive there. Um, but I think it's very nice that they invited us, but I don't know how to achieve it. Right. And yeah, I wouldn't I be able to go anyway. Yeah. I, I agree with you that um, it's a nice to receive the invitation, but um, and yeah, I, not accessible. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's if it if we could have afford if it's worth the effort, I should say. Yeah. And then well, lastly, I'm, I would put it that way, too. <laughs> OK, yeah, the other exactly. point, what's the other point? The other one is I'm hoping that uh, the, the members had a chance to review the minutes that were sent out. Oh, shoot. OK. Um, if not, I can hold them for next month. Can we hold them? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, I think this was the beginning of a discussion about the website. Um, I think Pamela is going to send us links to ones that she has noticed that she thinks are particularly exemplary. And we can start there as a, a jumping off point. I will also check out the accessibility of all the PDFs that are on the page um, because that's a really important thing to do. And I think this is the beginning. It's a complicated discussion. Uh, ac accessibility and content are very complex. And then organization of content is the third topic. You yeah. can have all the content you want, but if people can't figure out where to find it, mm -hmm. that's even more complicated. So this is none of this is easy. And there are very few websites that I've actually gone to that I think, oh my God, this is great. I can go on it, I can type in what I'm looking for, and I can actually find it. Um, it's not easy. But anyway, I think we're done. I need I, I need a motion to adjourn. And what we need for next week month is for people to look at these websites. This is but Ian. I need a motion to adjourn. This is Ian, motion to adjourn. Okay, second from someone. I second it. Okay. Um I guess motions to adjourn, to adjourn are not debatable. So everybody not in favor of adjourning, say aye. Okay, I guess we're adjourned until November 12. Yeah. It'll be a five weeker this time because this is, um, yeah, it'll be November 12. So we have five weeks to look at all these websites. Oops. <laughs> okay. Happy Halloween, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> bye-bye. Thank right. you. Right. Thank bye. You. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.
Bye. Thank you. Leave webinar button. Oh, oh, Philip, do you know what our numbers are? Uh, the, the, uh, sign up twice. Oh my God. And then one of them is gone, so we have eight, but not eight. All right. Well, I want to be sure. I think the uh, one.
So we have a changed. So we have Thank you. 